I don't know about you guys, but I've been having a blast playing Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury and discovering all of the green stars and cat shines. I just love how every single level in Mario 3D World is different and introduces cool ideas and mechanics. And I decided that today was a great day to tell you all about my favorite levels from this game. But just before we get into this, look at this graph. Oof, only 24% of my viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. Can I get you gamers to hit the subscribe button? It takes a second for you, but helps me out a lot. Alright, let's get going. Hey, I'm Nico, and here's my top 10 best Super Mario 3D World levels. The music in Mario games is usually phenomenal, and 3D World is no exception. But I have to give props to Beep Block Skyway, a level that uses the music as a mechanic. In this level, there are blue and red blocks that appear and vanish depending on the beat of the music. This means that in order to get to the end, you'll need to be paying attention to the rhythm of the music and plan your moves depending on when those blocks come and go. This is such an original idea, and this level also combines this with the double cherry power-up, meaning that you'll need to pay even more attention to everything. This level ends with a giant slide made out of those B blocks, and you'll need to be moving left and right and jump to try to get to the end of this slide with all of your clones alive. Which is way easier said than done. Yeah. While Nintendo recently opened up its theme park in Japan, there was already one Nintendo theme park that existed in Super Mario 3D World, and it's World 8. Yeah, this world is super cool looking, but entering the spiky spike bridge will quickly remind you that Bowser is the one that built this theme park. While there is a giant ferris wheel and lots of RGB lights in the background, you'll soon see that there's also tons of spiky platforms you have to get through. This course is all about you making your way across tons of very narrow bridges with spikes appearing and going back down in the blocks, forcing you to plan your every move. It also contains a bunch of annoying dry bones and fire bros, and the end part will force you to jump on those big square platforms that are full of spikes while waiting for those to move to the end of the stage. Yeah, it's a very spooky one, but oh so fun. After completing this game, you'll soon unlock this rocket ship that brings you to the sky in World Star, the first of many secret worlds in this game. The second level, Super Galaxy, is such a cool one because it's really reminiscent of the Super Mario Galaxy series. With those Lumas flying all over the place, shooting stars falling down in the background, and you'll also have to be very careful on those spinning platforms. Sometimes, the platforms have green stars, coins, and boost panels underneath them, so timing is key to getting everything. As you make your way near the end of the stage, you'll soon see a familiar vessel in the background. Is this the Comet Observatory from Super Mario Galaxy 1? Well, you bet it is! And after you beat this stage, you'll also unlock this game's secret character, Rosalina. Yeah, she's in the game! <laughs> she jumps super high and can also do the super spin attack that Mario could do in the Galaxy series. <laughs> now this is epic! World 3 is home to a secret level that's located on the other side of that pipe and entering it will bring you to Mount Must Dash, a level that is actually inspired by the Mario Kart series. This stage contains boost panels, colored blocks, exactly like Super Mario Kart. Heck, even the music is inspired by that game. You'll be running, sliding and jumping to gather all of the green stars and the secret stem from this stage, and the only downside I could find is how short it is. Imagine if you had to clear it three times just in order to get all of the three green stars, you know, like how most Mario Kart tracks have three laps to beat them? That would have been a sick concept. But still, it doesn't change the fact that this one is a pretty amazing level. 
I have to give props to Super Mario 3D World for trying new stuff with its level. Instead of simply reusing grass, desert, water, ice, blah blah blah, like the new Super Mario Bros series does. Hands on Hall is yet another example of Nintendo's creativity when they just decide to go wild. This level is actually based on traditional Japanese dojos, featuring narrow indoor corridors with shoji doors, tatami mats and gongs all of which you can interact with. Defeating Goombas in this one will give you the Goomba Mask, which allows you to blend in with the other Goombas. Hmm, there is an imposter among us. The second part of this stage will bring you outside, where you'll be avoiding thwomps, fishy boobkins and other enemies, making your way onto the top of the dungeon to discover the end flagpole. To be honest, I didn't think much of this next level before I started speedrunning this game. World 5-7, or Searchlight Sneak, is a castle level without a bus, but it will feature tons of bullet bills and falling down means instant death. But that's not the reason why this level is cool. In it, you're meant to move slowly to avoid getting detected by the searchlights, because if that happens, then bullet bills start attacking you. It's very fun to do a sneaky playthrough, sure, but playing this level in a speedrun totally changes the mechanic. During my runs, this one is what I call the EPIC GAMER level, because you have to jump across big gaps and use the bullet bills to get green stars, bust open walls, and you need to use the spring enemy to bounce your way to the top and collect the final green star. All of this while avoiding getting hit by a bullet bill to keep your cat suit. And since you're not avoiding the searchlights at all, well you keep getting attacked by those bullet billies every single time. It's really a fun level to speedrun and just a fun level to play. <laughs> One of the main complaints people had about the original Wii U release of 3 World was how slow it was sometimes. Well, that's surely because they haven't played Red Hot Run from World 7. This level is actually insane, featuring boost panels all over the place and forcing you to run, jump and dodge all sorts of obstacles if you want to get all of the green stars. It's such a fun stage because of how fast it goes. You barely have time to think before you react in this one. And since you only have a hundred seconds to beat it, well, there's just no time to waste. Get ready to fall down multiple times on your first playthrough, especially if you're going for all of the green stars. It's a really short one, but oh so satisfying to beat. To beat Super Mario 3D World, you need 170 green stars, meaning you don't have to collect them all, but you do have to get quite a lot. And some of the best levels to get green stars out of are the Mystery Houses. Those levels are made out of tiny challenges, like defeating enemies, climbing up walls, breaking blocks, and much more. In World Crown, you have access to the Mystery House Marathon, a level containing 30 green stars. Just like the name implies, this level is just a marathon run of some of the most popular levels you've previously beaten, but made more difficult with new enemies to defeat, obstacles to dodge and new mechanics to use. Since it's a marathon, you have to beat all 30 green stars without taking a break, and messing up only once brings you back to the beginning. This is truly the best mystery house in my opinion, and one of the most stressful challenges you'll encounter in the game. While we're on the topic of stressful levels, welcome to the Fuzzy Time Mine, a level where you quickly have to make your way up a tower to quickly leave it. Why, you might be wondering? Well, because of the evil fuzzies down there. <laughs> yep, throughout this level, you'll be chased by a black cloud of evil fuzzies and touching those means instant death. So trust me, you'll want to make your way up as fast as possible. In order to reach the exit, you'll need to jump on seesaws, clouds, spring panels and will have to avoid getting crushed by those big blocks. All of this while collecting some delicious green stars. There is even a part where you have to run onto the right side of the screen while the fuzzies eat up the left side. Now this is scary. 
After you beat every single level and collect all of the green stars in the game, you'll get access to a very special final level that everyone knows about. The Champion's Road. The name implies that this level is only for champions. And I totally get why. It asks you to beat several difficult challenges, starting off with scary jumps on moving blocks. But this ain't difficult, compared to what awaits next. Remember those beat blocks from number 10? They were fun, right? <laughs> well, now they're back. Except they switch color every beat, meaning you'll have to run like a mad lad if you expect to cross these gaps without falling down. Not only will you have to cross gaps, you'll also need to climb a staircase made out of those blocks. And let me tell you, this is not easy. After defeating some Magikoopas on falling blocks, you'll reach a part full of pits, fuzzies and big spiky pendulums. But thankfully, Bob the Piranha Plant is here to help out. But still, this level is far from over. Having a vertical part where you need to bounce on ants and plants, and this part where you swim while dodging moving spiky blocks. And after that, you'll have to run on those boost panels while dodging circles of lasers. This level is ridiculously difficult, and with no checkpoint, it truly is the hardest level in the game but also the best one in my opinion. Thanks a lot for watching this video, my dudes. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to subscribe, to hit the bell, and to smash like. Tap the cards on screen right now to watch even more epic videos like this one, and I'll just see you in the next one. Bye!